should we be only watching movies with saints in it? Let's talk about that. Hello, good people. Father Brad Doyle here. You're watching Coffee Talk, where we drink coffee and talk about Jesus. That is Jesus in Spanish. It's also the husband of Christine Mendizabal. Most people have Netflix, at least the, the youngins these days. Um, I've, I've known to watch a Netflix show or two, and uh, the question always comes up, you know, when you have the world at your fingertips, all of these movies, all of these shows, what's the morality here? Do we watch everything? Do we only have to watch like super duper Holy Saint movies? Or can we watch like movies like blockbuster hits? Number one, just because a movie has sin in it doesn't mean a Catholic Christian shouldn't watch it. I was told this truth by uh, a guy named John Henry Newman, blessed John Henry Newman. He was an Anglican priest converted to a Catholic priest, and he became a cardinal, so Cardinal Newman. You might recognize his name associated with Catholic student centers, universities. He wrote a document called The Idea of the University. It was his uh, expression of what the, the perfect university would be, and in it, he was talking about literature, and he said this. If literature is to be made a study of human nature, you cannot have a Christian literature. It is a contradiction in terms to attempt a sinless literature of a sinful man. Literature, movies, most any art, its goal is to express the truth of the human person and the truths of human interactions. And the last time I checked, there was sin in the world. We struggle with sin, we're personally tempted to sin, we battle with sin, sins uh, throughout the world have caused suffering and pain. And to have a literature, to have movies, to have music that doesn't recognize that sin exists and that we have to deal with it is not a good literature. It's not good music, and it's not a good movie. But two, movies that glorify sin and do not expose sin for what it is, it's bad literature, it's bad movies, it's bad art. I'm gonna come up with a example here. Maybe you like this movie. If you like the movie, then you're a heathen. Just joking. Wedding Crashers, Will Ferrell. Okay, objectively funny dude, but what is the theme of Wedding Crashers? A couple of friends crash weddings so that they, they can use people. At the end of the day, Everyone thinks it's funny, and everything works out for them. Where's the problem here? It's not that sin was there, because people experience sin. People really do crash wedding parties. Now what would make a good movie? Showing that sin exists, and that it has consequences. There's bad results from it. The ultimate problem with a movie is not whether sin is there, sin is present, or expressed, it's what it says about sin. Does it glorify it? Does it say you can do it? Does it say you should do it? Does it help you do it? Or does it say the truth, which is the wages of sin is death? But we must do something smart, which is called avoiding the near occasion of sin. When's the last time you went to confession? Hopefully it was like within a month or two months or at least a year. But in it, you say the act of contrition. You say, Oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for these sins, and I detest them with all my heart. I'm forgetting the act of contrition right now because I'm nervous. But at the end you say, with the help of thy grace, I desire to confess my sins, to do my penance, and to avoid the near occasion of sin. Fancy phrase, it just means if you know you're going to be tempted to sin by doing something, going somewhere, being around certain people, then you don't go around those certain people, you don't go those places, and you don't do those certain things. So even if there's an objectively good movie that exposes the horrors of sin, but it might bring you to sin, then don't go there. Finally, I wanna give you Father Brad's three 
favorite movie picks. This is like my favorite three movies. Number three, and I'm going to join them together, is Godfather Part 1 and Part 2. I'm going to try not to spoil alert this, but it might happen. Why is this? You might say, oh my goodness, Father, you can't say that on YouTube. There's sin. There's a naked person. True. But what is the Godfather saying? What is uh, this work of art saying is that the wages of sin is death. At the end of the day, it's about a family that is in the mob. They kill people. They make hits. They use each other and they use others. They kill each other. And at the end of the day, they're lonely and they're sad. Sin has destroyed their life and destroyed their family. Hashtag spoiler alert. That's why it's a good movie. Because it shows the depths and beauty of human relationships and family. And also how sin can destroy it. Number two. One day more. Another day, another destiny. This never-ending road to Calvary. Les Miserables. Or Les Mis for short. You might say it's a little depressing. I say it's hopeful. It's about the struggles of multiple different characters um, in France in a, in a very tough time period. People are depressed, but through all the depression, through all the struggle, through all the pains, through all the toils, hope and mercy, and ultimately, and this is the most important part of Les Mis, forgiveness breaks through. Forgiveness heals. Number one, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. Rudy. Every time I watch the movie Rudy, I want to get up and I want to tackle someone. That's why I don't watch Rudy with my grandma. Because she might get hurt. No, I'm joking. Rudy um, is about the human spirit, the, the soul reaching for, for things that everyone else told you you can't do. Everyone else told you you're too small, you're not good enough, you're not talented enough, and Rudy wants to play football at Notre Dame. You watch and see whether he does. When I watch this movie with my dad, we need two Kleenex boxes. We gonna cry, and you will too.